Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on our show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. I have Liz Illig on the line, who is an author in one of our upcoming books to be announced, and also CEO at Legendary Ideas Group and Puff and Fluff. Liz, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here with you. Oh, I'm excited to have you here and I'm excited to document and to learn more about the Puff and Fluff story and journey that you took to building that franchise and also, of course, how you're helping others succeed in business as well. So we're going to get into that. And then the book, um, just for everybody watching, we're going to go a little bit into the book, but we're not going to go all the way because uh, we'll be bringing Liz back on for a second part and a second interview where we're going to do a deep dive when the book is actually live. But Liz, just to get us kicked off, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Liz, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Liz, what mission matters to you? So what I would say for Mission Matters is you need to empower people with knowledge. And the reason I say that is knowledge, nobody can take that away from you. And so that's from a personal standpoint, but also a business standpoint. Whoever you are working with in your business, empower them with knowledge. Because the more knowledge they have, the better success rate they will have. It's awesome. Love bringing mission-based individuals on the show. And I guess just get us kicked off. I mean, let's, let's start a little bit further back in your history. Like, where did you get introduced to this concept of entrepreneurship? Where did all that begin for you? All right. It started way back in the day. And the reason <laughs> I say this is probably when I was in like third or fourth grade, I really don't even remember, but <laughs> we had a convention. It was called Invention Convention, and it was from the school. And the school offered you to be a part of this. So I decided, I was like, I'm going to make a product. I went into it two years in a row. So I created two products. They never hit the market, but that's okay. I started <laughs> creating and building. And that was what was really important in my whole entrepreneurial journey so far is I look back at a really young age and I was creating and building. And so I have to tell you about these two inventions just because yeah. I want to know. And I'm like, did you raise funding? Like we're VCs. And no, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't know anything about that. But what I did know is there was products out there right. that were not in the market. And from an early childhood, yeah. I saw this. So this is probably in the early 90s. My family never had enough resources to fly to like Disney World world or Disneyland. So my mother would always take us siblings, there was five of us, on educational trips, which means we would drive. So yeah. we would go to the Rocky Mountains and learn about the mountains and you know, all wow. of these, all of these really cool educational foundational yeah. places to know about in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to hang out with my mom at night while everybody else was sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I would sit in the front seat and I would help her navigate where to go. Wow. And I would always have to put that overhead light on, right? Because yeah. it was too dark. And so I told her one time, because it was always, it's always a distraction in the front seat, putting that light on. And I said, what if we created a glow in the dark map? <laughs> Wow. This is before like cell phones. We have to make Yeah. Oh my right? gosh. That's so, so... you know, somebody young listening She's to this. like, who's what what kid is this? Whose kid are you? Yeah. So I then take I'm originally from Iowa and I live in Arizona now, but I took a map of Iowa and I took paint, glow in the dark paint. And I wow. mapped every line on the map. Well, okay, I'm going to take it into a convention center. So how are you going to be able to see it? So then we had to make a big box and have a flashlight in it, oh. you know, to like shine it so that it would, the lights would activate, right? Yeah. And then when the judges came over, then they could look, peek in the hole and be able to see the glow in the dark map. That's amazing. You thought of this by yourself and you're like, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. And then my mom, you know, she was always supportive of all of our mm -hmm. ideas all the time. And so it, she helped me bring it to life. So the wow. other one that I have to say that has literally led me down to like my full entrepreneur journey yeah. is I made a product that was called He Can Eat the Dish. Mm. I love pets. And my, at the time, my grandpa was a buffalo farmer. And so we would get a lot of buffalo meat from him. And I was like, what if I made a buffalo dish and broiled it 
<laughs> and have it as a treat. And then I can add the kibble inside of it. So mm-hmm. once again, my mom and I are in the kitchen. We're like, you know, broiling these bowls, forming these bowls with meat. Yeah. And, you know, building this bowl, broiling it at a high temp. So it was like a full bowl. Then we'd add the kibble into it. But little did I know, the dog would take the The kibble out and eat the dish first. So (laughs) it was a flop. But the the point of this has been in me to create and look Mm -hmm. at something and really be innovative. Wow, that's an amazing story. One of the big testaments I have here is that like, how supportive was your your mother to help you with these products and to help you with these inventions? I think for everybody watching, it's interesting because a lot of times, especially when we're younger, right? Like that little bit of additional encouragement, that extra time, I feel like that can kind of help form who we are in the future. And, And as you mentioned, ended up leading you on the path to what you do today. Yeah, it goes a long ways. Let's fast forward a little bit. So as the, you know, let's say the entrepreneurial years go by first, you know, or correct me if I'm wrong, the first like big business idea that you went after is Puff and Fluff or one of them, I should say. And that's where we're at today. Like, how did all that begin? Yeah. So I was working a corporate job and as a hobby going through college, I had a pet sitting business. I absolutely love and adore pets. And so I had this pet sitting business that started, you know, getting a little bit bigger. I couldn't do it all on my own. So I had my friends helping me and so forth. So one day I'm sitting in a cubicle at my corporate job and I'm like, I just can't do this anymore. Like I gotta go do, I gotta do something else. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, I have kind of this side hustle hobby as a pet sitting business, how can I find another business that could go along in the pet industry and I could use those people that I already have to help support, you know, this new business? So I started looking up grooming shops for sale and I stumbled upon a small mom and pop grooming shop, 450 square feet. The employee was the actual owner and the groomer. So it was just really, really small. So I really wanted to figure out how I could buy it. At the time, I'm ton of money in debt because I, you know, put myself through my undergrad and my master's degree. I have a mortgage. I have a lot of things on the line. But remind you, I'm only about 25 at the time. And I went from bank to bank during my lunch hour at my corporate job. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who can give me a business loan? Well, this was 2013. Nobody was giving business loans at the time. Yeah. And to somebody that specifically had no business knowledge or, you know, right. hey, you had an idea when you went for it, though. I get it. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And so from there, one bank out of all of them said, Liz. Wait, how many did you go to? Wait a minute. How many? Seven. 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 Wow. Okay. Went to seven. And this was on my lunch hour because, you know, I work eight to five. And one bank said, we'll give you a line of credit. That's yeah. not a secure loan. It's really mm-hmm. high interest rate. But I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do this. But I was $4,000 short if I took that line of credit mm-hmm. for to pay for the new business. So I called my dad up, which now he has passed. And mm-hmm. I said, can you please give me the remaining $4,000 that I need? And he's mm-hmm. he's a farmer in Iowa. Yeah. So he has no idea, like, why, why would you buy a grooming shop? You know, yeah. just he couldn't wrap his head around what I wanted to do. And a few days later, I went out to the mailbox and I found an envelope from him and it said, pay me back when you're a success. Oh, man, dad. It's and amazing. I had that $4,000 in hand and he wrote that on an eight by 11 notebook piece of paper and ripped it out. Mm. So, you know, it, it was like, he wanted to say it, you know, there wasn't a card or anything. It was, you know, it was, it was a transaction yeah. at that point. So I had this $4,000 in hand and I had this bank that was going to give me this line of credit. So I wow. took a huge, huge risk and I signed the line of credit. You know, people ask me, was that fearful? And I'm sure it was, but I didn't know as much as I know now, but mm. I just knew that I had no opportunity to fail. And I knew I was going to have to probably do extreme measures, extreme networking, figure it out in order to make this a success. And I bought it. And now I have nine locations that I own. I want to stick in there, which is, this is an amazing story, but there's some stuff I have to unpack here and uh, we'll get into present day in a moment. And wow, what an amazing dad, first off. But as you were going through, I want to, if I can, and know it's been a while, but take you back to that mindset of Mm -hmm. facing that initial rejection from those, you know, those first six banks. Feel like like you're you're overcoming big hurdles in the beginning. Like, how'd you do that? What got you through that? Because 
because at this point you weren't on the hook, so to speak, for money to, to dad yet. It was more so just your idea and what you wanted to do. Like what got you to that point to just say, you know, one said no on to the next one. Determination, right? Mm -hmm. I, I have this personality inside of me that is no fluff. That is straight determination. And if I set my eye on the prize, I will find a way to get there no matter what. There's not a lot of things in my life that I can sit here to say and that I haven't done because I couldn't. Like there's a will, there's a way. And that and that creativity of figuring out, like as you were going along, you were also doing this and, I, and I'm unpacking this because, you know, there's some people that have watched this that maybe have told themselves some things or affirmed some things that aren't necessarily true. One of them being, you know, you, you can't figure it out while you're working full time. You took your lunch break and obviously I'm guessing to do your research and other things like that, some of your evening hours at this point to start figuring out and devising a plan. And ultimately you were executing on your lunch break. Give us more of like how your thought process around that went. Yeah, a lot of it's navigating, looking mm -hmm. at the bigger picture. I think a lot of us look so narrow, we don't see the big picture. And so really honing in and saying, how can I navigate through this, right? Because if one bank or two banks or three banks would have told me no, I could have just like left and been like, it, this isn't going to work out. Yeah. But I was like, somebody, somebody, yeah. some corporation mm -hmm. will say yes. And here's the thing. I may have been asking the wrong thing at the banks at the very beginning as well. I didn't know about line of credits at, mm -hmm. at this time, that that was actually feasible or whatnot. But it was me talking to somebody you know, you just never know who can really change, change your life in, you know, a quick second. And this one banker said, I can't really help you, but I can give you a line of credit. Ooh, yeah. you know, I'm like, wow. I'm intrigued. Let's navigate through what that looks like. Wow. It's a great story. And, and, and I see a lot of people and I, I mean, I've been doing this long enough to where I know that, you know, I've heard, you know, many stories where they jump off the cliff, so to speak, they put it all on the line, just like you did. And then I, and then I, in order to succeed and then I've heard other stories where some people may have taken another approach and worked their corporate job and saved up and funded themselves, or some people may have, you know, worked part time and, and like change things. But for you, it was important to kind of go all in. Like explain that to us. Yeah. Well, you know, I knew I was going to have to go all in because I yeah. wasn't going to be able to be in two places at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I just knew there was no opportunity to fail because failing, there was actually going to be some consequences, right? Mm -hmm. There could be, I could lose my house. I couldn't pay my, mm -hmm. you know, bills. I might have to file bankruptcy. I mean, there was a lot on the line. And yes, is that scary? Was there fear? I'm yeah. sure. But at the same time, I just buckled up mm -hmm. and I navigated and figured out how to mm -hmm. do it. And, you know, and, and I also didn't rely on others. I mm -hmm. knew that I was the only one that could make this a success. And I'm the mm -hmm. only one that can spend the time, energy, and money to be able to make it a success. I would characterize you. I want to jump ahead a little bit here as I, now, cause I know, you know, as we've been preparing for this interview and I've done my research, like I definitely characterize you as a serial entrepreneur. So maybe starting many businesses, but I think you're a, you're a unique version of a serial entrepreneur because in my experience, you know, many, many people that maybe have that moniker, give themselves that title. A lot of times they're starting a lot of business, but maybe they're not necessarily scaling them all, or maybe they're not necessarily Necessarily, I won't say a hands-off operator. There's always a certain amount that you'll do, but they're not necessarily building systems and putting the people in place to where they're really maybe spreading themselves thin into the amount of businesses they can grow and how they can grow them. But what I've noticed about yourself is in your methodology of being a serial entrepreneur is that you're not only growing and starting multiple serious businesses, but you're, you're also in mind with scaling and empowering those that operate them for you on the day-to-day -day basis. Can you give us maybe just some ideas around your philosophy of this? And obviously we're going to go further and I want to get into the actual businesses like Puff and Fluff and what you're doing there. But I want to start with kind of like some of the methodology or the mindset that led you to that space. So the first part is going to be, I'm a builder, right? If you even go back to that first story, I built. And I really feel it's important for me as an entrepreneur to build. One building block upon the other really magnifies what you actually can do. And for me, building also allows me to empower and give people more freedom, but more opportunity. So if I would have just stayed with one grooming shop or something like that, 
I wouldn't be able to give a lot of people opportunity mm -hmm. and empower people to be able to change their lives. And so for me, it's just really important. But this didn't just happen overnight, right? I mean, yeah. I... I Anything think, you're building is not going to happen overnight. It, if somebody it tells you, it's, it. yeah, and, not happening. Know, as, and as an entrepreneur, you have to be in your operations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I first started this one pet grooming location, I was the receptionist. I was the IT manager. I was the HR director. I was everything. <laughs> I learned my operation and I understood my customer. Yeah. That took time. That took two to three years of me being in this operation unlocking the door and locking it at night and really fully immersing myself into the business a hundred percent because I didn't get here today without doing that. And so I think it makes me a human entrepreneur, really understanding the business and all the things that come along with it. Yes. Yes. Do we come across new things? Yes. But if you're in a business for three solid years, five days a week, at least, you have put in the time and you've been able to build and change and really evolve to know what the business is going to look like long term. I love that you mentioned that you were everything in the beginning because, you know, there's different routes, entrepreneurships, uh, and different entrepreneurs, depending on their level of skill, their experience, what they want to do, right? Their vision also, like if they want to raise capital, if they don't want to raise capital, they want to bootstrap, they don't want to bootstrap. I mean, a lot of different ways and beyond the context of this discussion, but I can remember and I can relate because myself and the other co-founder, we chose to bootstrap this business and media company. And in the beginning, I mean, I was, you'd be laughing, Liz. So you said you were HR, you were this, you were that. How about this? If I was doing the podcast interview. After the podcast interview, I was editing it. After that, I was distributing it. And then I was doing the next interview right after that. So I'm talking about, you know, doing 60 interviews a week at that pace. Pace. And that was, you know, what it took to build that groundwork. And that was also the apprenticeship phase. And I feel like and, and without that apprenticeship phase, we wouldn't have been able to do maybe some of the things that we've been able to accomplish. Thankfully, due to our, our loyal audience, we wouldn't have been able to do it. We wouldn't have been able to understand as a business owner, if I wasn't that operator and I was just saying, you know, I just want to interview people. And I didn't understand the back end of what goes into production, distribution, and all these things. Like I would have had a lot of blind spots that I don't have today. What I want to focus on is that apprenticeship phase. I feel like so many people, you read a headline and, you know, they're like, they hear about this next entrepreneur that did something in this amazingly fast time or perceived fast time and all these other things. And it's like, sometimes we get, we pressure ourselves in, as entrepreneurs thinking that we don't have to have that apprenticeship phase. So for me, all those things you were doing in the beginning, to me, that was your like road as an apprentice to learn how to be what you're going to be today, right? Yeah. And I think because of that, I was a, I'm able to understand what other people may have to experience when yeah. I step out of the business. And that really leads me to, you know, people look at me today and say, how did you do this? Mm -hmm. And it goes back to my mission matters. It's empowering people with knowledge and information. And I will never forget the day that I, I bought my second grooming location. And this was wow. in 2016. So it was three <laughs> years after. And I remember I was driving from grooming shop one to grooming shop two. <laughs> and the two managers at the exact same time, I kid you not, called uh, me. And I have one on the phone and I have one on the other line. <laughs> and they have a problem. Hmm. They have an issue. Yeah. Well, it happens to be the same issue. And at that very moment, that's when I tell people my nightmare occurred. So this was supposed to be an exciting time in the history of Puff and Fluff and my Expansion. Yeah. journey, right? No, this was the nightmare because what I soon learned is that I was not ready for two locations mm -hmm. because there was only one Liz. And because of that, I had to find out and figure out really quick how to get the information here onto paper so that people could be filled with knowledge. And at that very moment in time, I will live with this till the day I die, <laughs> that I really failed people. I failed people because I was not ready to give them the information they needed to be successful in their careers. And I think sometimes we get really ahead of ourselves. And that is exactly what 
I did at the time is I got ahead of myself thinking, oh, I, we know how to do one, two will be fine, you know, all of these things. And I had to think and I had to navigate, how was I going to do this? Mm-hmm. So over the next year, from 2016 to 2017, I started a Word document, a blank white screen on my computer. Wow. And I started writing down every question I was asked by my staff. And I answered it right underneath the question. And so little did I know I was creating a standard operating procedure, training manual, operational manual, whatever you would like to call it for my whole business. And it took me a year. And so once I had that in hand, possibilities were endless because I had all the knowledge and everything that I built over the last three years in a system. It was documented. It was like Google like search your, search your question for your business and the answer comes up. It was so amazing. And that's really where my growth took place because Mm -hmm. two shops was easy. Now three shops is easy. Oh, we can go remodel a shop in 48 hours because we have a system in place and we know how to do it. And so it started becoming rapid fire after I put in the time, right? Mm -hmm. That was four years at the point. And we were able to keep buying grooming shops because the other grooming shops were doing well. Mm -hmm. So I could reinvest my own money into this. You know, I had all this, I had that line of credit paid off. I had my student loans paid off. You know, I did what I needed to do, but then I could start building even more and empowering people with knowledge and giving people opportunity. It's a great story. And when you talk about documenting and things like this, especially for people that have been successful in a business and you think about like the value also, not saying that that's why why you did that. You did it for a very specific reason, but just the value when individuals are thinking about selling a business or when they're thinking about like other models or other ways of expansion or raising additional capital, like all of those processes and things that you put in place, like that's adding value to what you're doing. And I must say, I've bought now eight of the nine grooming shops and wow. none of them came with a manual. Yeah. So we were able to rebrand it. But mm-hmm. as the success was happening, people mm-hmm. started seeing it. And people are like, Liz, I want to work with you. I'm like, you can bring your pet into Puff and Fluff, a grooming <laughs> shop. Like, that's how you know. Like, I'm like, that's all Absolutely. I do for a living. And so people were like, I want to expand my business. I want to do what you're doing. So one day I started Legendary Ideas Group and it used to be Liz Illig Consulting because I would work with people one-on-one, yeah. but we've grown and expanded. Once again, the same business model as, mm-hmm. as Puff and Fluff is, you know, I became the operations for quite a few years. I was doing all the sales. I was the writer. Right. I, I was the, you know, everything at one point. And then I built a team behind it. And so now that's what we're able to do is help people do what I've done with Puff and Fluff. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't be more thankful for Puff and Fluff because it's really given me this story. It's given me my success that I've had to be able to build onto something else, a new business. And just to clarify, so you were blessed, you learned a lot, you you grew your business, and then you decided to be a blessing to others and teaching them how to mm-hmm. operate their businesses and also scale and grow their businesses based off of the success you had. So what I love about this is, well, number one, you figured some things out. Number two, you then and thought about how do you add value to others and how do you make it so that maybe their journey, I won't say it doesn't have to be so long. I mean, different people are different measures on their journey based off a lot of things. But I mean, if you can cut down some of the headaches that you know, or the pitfalls that you know may be ahead of them based off of working with your team, all the better. It's more value to the marketplace, less headaches for your clients, the individuals that are hiring you for this and your team, and just more possibility for their businesses. And so looking at this side of your business, this is not just for dog grooming. In fact, when you say you're consulting, helping people, there's many different industries that you're that you're working with. Can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. So we help really any business that's looking to create an operational or training manual or standard operating procedure, really documenting the essence of a business, Mm -hmm. because that is one thing, like you just said, will bring value, whether you're selling, whether you want to empower people with knowledge and information. There are so many business owners out there that have all the information in their brain and head that need to get it down on paper but have no idea to do it because they maybe don't know how to write. They Mm -hmm. maybe don't know how to articulate the information 
or they don't know what they don't know. And it can be really challenging to say, okay, open up a Word document. What do you start documenting? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like that's a big lot. That's a lot. That's right? scary. Where do you even start? It's very scary. And so, you know, from an outside perspective, m- most people will hire us just because of a time, but also right. looking at the obvious, right? As business owners, things are just are like second nature to us. Yeah. But that's not second nature when you hire somebody tomorrow and they start and how are you going to be able to onboard them? You know, it's, it's also a culture issue yeah. that a lot of uh, places have is that they don't empower people with knowledge and information. And so then the employee fails yeah. and the business owner thinks that they failed because they just couldn't get the job of, mm-hmm. you know, the knowledge and information, but it wasn't even ready and available to them. Yeah. And- it's so true. And that fresh set of eyes like you might do a, a something every single day, all day long. And to you, you, like you said, second knowledge. But if you have an outside group asking you that question or, or digging that out of you, then you have that epiphany like, oh, wait a minute, that's not common knowledge, right? And, and as we bring this all together, you know, I read the E-Myth book yeah. in 2011 and mm-hmm. I didn't buy my business until 2013. Wow. So I had this idea of how could I buy a business and actually not be a groomer because to this day, I've never groomed a dog. And oh, I don't wow. That's to. interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, go yeah, ahead. No, I've never <laughs> groomed a dog. I've built a 12 week program that we put people in a apprenticeship program. Yeah. You know, I know, understand the, the knowledge and of the, of course, the you know, your business. Knowledge. I understand. I know that, but I have not physically done it. Wow. And, you know, it's one of those things where a lot of people may be watching and are really intrigued and they're like, I want to do that. It didn't happen overnight. And it also took a lot out of me to be able to step outside of the business because now, you know, I'm the builder. I'm really, you know, the financial person of the business. Mm -hmm. I I feel like I'm the investor, but I'll never forget the day where I was sitting with my manager and she is still, she runs my company now, but she started as my manager and she looked at me and I'm in my shop with her and Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like not micromanaging, but like being around because I, that was all that I knew. Yeah. And one day she looked at me and she said, Liz, I need you to leave. And I kind of like, wow. you leave. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. And she said, I need to prove to you that I can do this on my own. And my heart sank. And I thought about it. It was like, I was glad she said it. But then I was hurt. Yeah. And I got in my car and I'll never forget that day. I drove home and I was crying. Aww. Because I thought I lost part of my business. Mm-hmm. Because somebody else now knew how to do it, but I taught them. And I really think as an entrepreneur, business owner, it's really important that you work with people, empower people with knowledge, because they actually can probably go and do it and they may do it better than you. Mm. And I've gone in, you know, after that, and I heard her speak to a customer of ours and it sounded like me in a good way. She had her own personal touch, but she had the business core principles at heart. Hmm. And that to me really Hmm. solidified that my work was done. Mm -hmm. My work was done there. And I now had an opportunity to start building this business, but many business owners do not get out of that first Hmm. phase. They don't ever leave. And yeah. here's the thing. If she didn't ask me to leave, I might not have left. Mm. What a lesson in that. And for everybody that's watching this or listening to this, now you know why Liz uh, was chosen to be an author in one of our upcoming books, because uh, she's a rock star and her ideas are solid. And uh, speaking of that, Liz, we're going to just touch on briefly some of the ideas that you plan to propose in the in the upcoming book that we're so proud to author with. So tell us a little bit more about some of the ideas you plan to present. Yeah. So I, what I'm really going to be talking about in this book is a snapshot of, yes, how did you get here? But how do you actually go and physically do something like this in your own way of whatever that looks like for your business? Because it's easy for me to say, you know, don't let fear get in the way, take risks. But what (laughs) what are some really down to earth things that are not fluff, that are going to be right straight to the point to be able to provide knowledge to you so that you can go do what's next for you? 
Yeah. And, and we'll leave it at that cliffhanger for everybody, because as I mentioned in the in opening of this program, uh, we'll be bringing Liz back on and we'll do a full deep dive into her writing once the book is live. But Liz, I just have to say it has been uh, great having you on the show today. If somebody is listening to this and they want to follow up and they want to connect with you and your team, I mean, about either of your businesses, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. So visit legendaryideasgroup.com. That's really where, you know, I spend a lot of my time and that would be the best place to connect on Instagram. We're on Instagram and also our website. Wonderful. And we'll put all that information into the show notes so that uh, audience can just click on it and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or listen to one of our episodes, we're all about bringing on mission-based entrepreneurs, executives, and experts and having them share their vision, their mission, why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and really what can we all learn from that information so that we can all grow together. That's the type of uh, information or content that sounds interesting or engaging to you. Hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals just like Liz coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. Liz, until the next time, it's been so much fun working with you today. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you.